Welcome to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World, and good morning. My name is Glenn Taransky. I am a member of the advisory board here at One Business World. Leading Entrepreneurs of the World features entrepreneurs, founders, and business leaders presenting on cutting-edge topics and the latest in industry developments. Our goal is to provide the global business and entrepreneurial communities with a window into the minds of those who are shaping the future of the world. Today, we're very pleased and honored to welcome orthopedic doctor and entrepreneur, Dr. Derek Donegan. Dr. Donegan is the co-founder of OR Intelligence, an AR-enabled platform that digitizes and optimizes the oper operating room supply chain to drive teamwork, efficiency, and quality. At OR Intelligence, Derek and his team empower surgical stakeholders with one central platform for scheduling, implant selection, logistics, virtual surgical support, implant and instrument right sizing, as well as data analytics. Dr. Donegan is also an assistant professor of orthopedic surgery at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. After receiving his BS from Ithaca College and his MD from Jefferson Medical College, he completed an orthopedic surgery residency at the University of Pennsylvania and an orthopedic trauma and reconstructive surgery fellowship at the University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey. He went on to receive his MBA from Temple University, Fox School of Business. During his career, Dr. Donegan has amassed more than 50 peer-reviewed publications, written 10 book chapters, and has given over 50 presentations at national and international uh, venues. Dr. Donegan's clinical interests include pelvic and the severe trauma, reconstructive orthoplasty, peri trauma surgery, geriatric fractures, the management of polytrauma patients, and post-traumatic deformity. His research interests include the outcomes from musculoskeletal trauma, biomedical analysis, fracture fixation constructs, and healthcare economics. Dr. Donegan, welcome. Good morning. We look forward to your, your presentation. It's an exciting time for, for healthcare, and you're certainly here on the cutting edge. So let me hand it off to you, and then we'll, we'll rejoin on the back end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn. Let me uh, share my screen here. Can everybody, can you hear me okay? Yeah, sounds good. Great. And... Uh, you see my screen. Good. Also good. All right, very good. Well, Glenn, again, thank you for the introduction. Um, as uh, Glenn mentioned, uh, my name is Derek Donegan. I'm one of the co-founders <clears throat> and managing partners of OR Intelligence. I'm also an assistant professor of orthopedic surgery at the University of Pennsylvania, I specifically specialize in orthopedic trauma surgery. Um, but today I wanna to talk to you more about um, uh, another passion of mine, and that is the idea of surgical process optimization uh, and driving efficiency and improving patient care, which is at the heart of uh, all that we do as physicians. So as some of you might know on this uh, webinar and some that might not, the healthcare landscape in the United States and globally is rapidly changing. If you look at the US healthcare as just from an economic perspective and a GDP spend, it would actually be the fifth largest economy in the world compared to other uh, global economies. Unfortunately, that spend from a healthcare dollar perspective doesn't always equate to good results. When you look at the US healthcare system in general, it actually ranks amongst some of the worst in developed countries. And so as we continue to go down this process of healthcare reform, which is ultimately the goal of decreasing costs, but improving quality, it really just becomes a math problem. And the goal is to save roughly a trillion dollars in the US based on health care spend, but really also to improve the quality of the care that we are given. So what does this look like in, in the US? Well, the amount of money spent on US healthcare accounts for roughly 17.9% of the US GDP, equating that to real dollars, that's upwards of $3.3 trillion. Now, as you start to dial in the different types of care that healthcare offers, and near and dear to my heart, when you look at operating room and operating room expenses, that accounts for roughly $166 billion of that. Another near and dear part of my heart is the orthopedic implant aspect of it. And that is roughly a $48 billion industry and is projected to continue to increase roughly 3.2% every year annually moving forward. Now, as the US healthcare system continues to be pushed to the limits and the idea of increasing quality and decreasing costs there is going to be a significant strain on our system and on our patients. Specifically, if you look at the aging population, the projected increase of people over the age of 50 will be doubled by 2050. 
Interesting enough that one of the more common surgical procedures that this patient population has is orthopedics. So when we start looking and thinking about cost containment strategies, uh, decreasing costs, improving quality, you know, this is a, an opportunity for us to really make a difference and improve the lives of our patients. So in that regards, so how does a surgical team actually function? Well, to, to be at their best, they really need to function with precision and coordination. I often liken it to a race car driver. You know, you can be the best race car driver in the world, but if your pit crew isn't functioning at its best, there's a pretty low chance you're going to win that race. Just like a surgeon, if you, you can be one of the best surgeons in the world, but if your team, your surrounding team is not functioning at their best, that is going to compromise the optimal outcomes that you can provide for your patients. So to, to function at its best, we need to optimize communication, optimize and transfer to expertise from one uh, hand to the other, and optimize the understanding of equipment that needs to be used to provide this service. But what does really happen uh, today in US healthcare system? Not at all, but at a lot, there's really a, a bunch of random acts of healthcare being performed. Unfortunately, a lot of the systems are antiquated, outdated, and leads to many communication errors and just difficulties in the system that leads to a ton of inefficiencies throughout the day-to-day -day lives of both physicians, surgeons, the people who work in hospitals and patients themselves. So in today's highly fragmented outdating operating room processes, that leads to wasted resources, overburdened and burnt out staff, and ultimately which can compromise patient care. What it comes down to is really an efficiency problem. You know, as the complexity of the surgeries that we perform, the complexity of the systems that we need to use to perform these complex surgeries continue to increase and overwhelm the supporting staff that are expected to know more with even less experience, it creates gaps, many gaps. Gaps of knowledge, gaps of communication, gaps of the inventory that is needed, the materials that is needed. And to even compound this, uh, this growing situation is that we still live in a very siloed world in, in where departments don't communicate as well as they could or should. And a, a lot of these antiquated manual processes undermine a lot of the teamwork that, that's being done and blur the lines of accountability to provide it optimal care. So let's take a look at a patient experience from a surgical perspective and the people involved. So at a very high level, you have the surgeon or the surgeon student, the schedulers, the people responsible for getting the surgery to uh, the scheduling system, whatever that may be, the people who are responsible for providing and managing the materials needed to perform the surgery, the staff in and around the OR that actually support uh, the surgery and help take care of that patient. And then you have some usually in very highly implant dependent fields, a third party representative that represents those implants that are being part of this process. Now what happens in current day is that there's a lot of antiquated processes that actually allow for or try to uh, enhance the communication amongst all these parties. And so what that really leads to is a lot of assumptions and presumptions. You know, the surgeon will often rely on staff or institutional knowledge just to anticipate the equipment that I may need or that they may need for a given surgical case. The people who have the responsibility of getting that equipment together, you know, they do not want anything bad to happen or anything to go wrong for that surgeon or for that patient. So by default, they send the quote unquote kitchen sink up to the OR to compensate for any potential mistakes. And in this aspect, cost is really not taken, uh, taken into account. And it probably shouldn't be because at the end of the day, we're really just trying to take care of the patient. But with that dials in a ton of inefficiency. And then you compound that aspect with sometimes the staff might not be as familiar with the equipment that that surgeon is requesting. And so they will be more inclined to open more trays uh, and to provide more uh, equipment than necessary, again, just to prevent anything from happening. And then you tie in the third party, party rep who, can, who tries to facilitate and interact amongst a lot of these groups to help uh, prevent any uh, problems, troubleshoot any uh, issues that might uh, be presented and replace any missing items. And what this all leads to is a bunch of opportunities for inaccuracy, inefficiencies uh, and infection risks. So let's break it down. Let's look at some of these gaps and where they come from and what they actually lead to. So gap one, the ability to select the right equipment. So again, in this ever-changing environment, the equipment that we use is becoming more and more complex and it's always changing. There are more and more vendors offering similar tools and similar types of equipment to do the same surgery 
uh, that was done probably about a decade ago with one or two different uh, types of implants. And now that same procedure can be done with probably 20 different types of implants. Every surgeon has their own preferences for whatever reason. It's maybe it's just the way I like to do it. Um, but that surgeon is unique to themselves and ha they have their own unique, unique algorithms of how they approach each case and what they want to do and what they feel is right for their patients. The existing documentation um, and then how things are brought up is kind of unreliable. There's, it's a manual process. It's not updated in real time. And it's also hard to share. Uh, the knowledge that is siloed and, and mostly non-transferable and the, the knowledge and experience that I gain over my experience throughout my career is often contained just in my head. The ability to transfer that to others and to have everyone on that same page can be often difficult in our current system. So what happens is our preferences as surgeons don't always align with optimal or even the, the appropriate selection of equipment. And it's, it makes it nearly impossible for staff to know exactly what equipment is needed and why and how it would be needed. This is a booking card of an actual OR case. And you look at the date from December of 2020, still handwritten, still requesting stuff on, on, uh, on a piece of paper um, in a world that, uh, of digital uh, processes that are surrounding us. This is still the way a lot of places do things. It can, can see how this can be uh, sought with, with uh, mistakes and issues and just miscommunication in general. So a lot of the processes are still antiquated. And to be quite frank, that's the norm at many places. Gap two, access to mission critical information. So again, a lot of the siloed uh, aspects of what we do in healthcare creates these, the system that are just disconnected, uh, leads to communication delays or even inaccuracies. The idea that the process of how the communication actually occurs, again, is antiquated and not necessarily standard, standardized. It could be from a handwritten note, an email, a phone call, a text message, something that's not really able to be tracked or transparent or visible in, in some way, shape or form. Additionally, there's really no automated way to check for errors or omissions to make sure that everything is complete or correct and, and prevent some of those missing items that might happen. At the end of the day, this leads to staff not having enough information or not trusting the information that they're given and that problems with the needed equipment are often not known or they, found, they are found out a little bit too late. Like for instance, in one of my cases last night, we were doing, uh, we needed power to put screws in. The power was never open until uh, the patient was asleep and the incision was open, creating a delay in that patient's care. But this happens on a regular basis. On the left of your screen here, this is a normal setup for, uh, for a spine surgery. You can see just tons of trays, instruments just laying around, kind of disorganizing that tray. I want to also point out the person in the green who is pretty close to the sterile field and actually not sterile at that point in time. The picture on the right is, uh, is probably a trauma case. You can see there's plates, there's screws, there's a bunch of different systems and instruments here that need to be used and organized throughout, uh, throughout the case. And so at the end of the day, chaos is really the norm. And what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is organizing chaos. And that becomes a routine part of our day-to-day -day job. The third gap is experience handling the equipment. Again, because of the increasing complexity and increasing uh, uh, number of instruments and implants that we need to use, there's actually too much to know for, uh, for a lot of people. Most of the staff that we work with on a regular basis are required to be generalists. They would say spend maybe 75% of their time doing orthopedic trauma, but the other 25% of their time or even more, they're required to do neurosurgery or OBGYN or vascular surgery or general surgery. So they're required to uh, understand not just what one type of surgeon does or not just one surgeon or one type of surgeon, but what multiple different types of surgeon actually need to know to do the case and what their preferences are. So to break it down in a little bit of a, of a chart way, so in the idea that there's uh, too much to know, if you think about it, going from the most experienced people in the room to the least experienced people in the room and what they need to know to work with, um, it breaks down something like this. The surgeon, average 14 years, sometimes even longer, roughly you know, 25 or so sets to work with, number of instruments, maybe around 1,000. The industry rep that's supporting uh, that specific uh, surgeon for the procedure that they're doing a little bit more um, and maybe about a double the number of sets. The nurse, again, uh, a little bit more uh, education and training, 
But then we get down to scrub tech, sterile processing uh, uh, department. They work with a ton more sets and need to know a ton more instruments than the surgeon themselves. And these people are often, you know, the, have the least experience and training to actually put this stuff together, but yet the, the bulk of the load falls on them to make sure that we as surgeons have the appropriate equipment and need uh, to take care of our patients. And then the fourth gap, the ability to record accurate data. You know, data today, um, even though uh, the digital process uh, of what we're doing and in healthcare with electronic medical records is starting to occur, uh, the data is still entered manually, whether it's being written or typed on the computer screen. Um, it happens, uh, that's the way it needs to happen. And this takes away from other tasks that the healthcare provider should actually be doing. And it is estimated that uh, most OR nurses or nurses in general spend about a quarter to half of their time charting uh, uh, in, in a chart instead of actually having direct patient uh, care activities. And this often leads to the fact that the manual process is inaccurate and leads to, again, uh, waste in the hospital not knowing exactly what is being used, when it's being used, and how it should be used, and where and when to make sure that this, the, the equipment is available and accessible to those who need it. So let's start, let's look at the impacts of some of these gaps. So we'll start with the surgeon. So the surgeon knowledge and communication gaps. So when the surgeon's preference doesn't necessarily align with optimal equipment selection, um, or maybe the, the best equipment for that uh, particular uh, situation in that particular environment in that hospital, what happens is we get malalignment, malalignment with facility contracting um, and malalignment of maybe implants that are based on best practices. And that leads, this malalignment leads to higher costs and potentially compromised patient outcomes depending on how you look at it. Let's look at the impact that the, the staff knowledge, communication, and material gaps has. When staff do not know or have the right knowledge or information experience, equipment in the OR is often either missing wrong or not usable. And so staff may not know how to assist with the equipment that's actually being used during that su surgery. And what this often leads to is confusion and stress, and sometimes a possible delay in care is my experience last night. And so what do they do to try to fix this problem? Well, the unnecessary equipment is sterilized and delivered. They bring up more, again, bringing the kitchen sink to the OR. Equipment is unavailable or for use elsewhere. So they might, uh, trays and equipment might be open unnecessarily to make sure that uh, nothing is missed. And that is taking that resource away from somebody else to use it. And then unnecessary opening of sterile equipment means that oftentimes that equipment needs to be re-sterilized for someone else to use. Um, it, when nothing was going to be used out of that, that set whatsoever. And so what, is, what does that lead to? Well, that leads to inflated inventory demand, unnecessary re-sterilization and restocking, and again, chaos and delays from equipment overload. Ultimately, this can relate in de delay in patient care and higher costs from a system perspective. And so when staff doesn't know, we, they often tend to rely a little bit more on that third party and sometimes there can be potential conflicts of interest with that, which again, leading to higher costs and potentially a higher infection risk, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So let's, I just wanted to call out the industry rep for a second, because although there's been some uh, focus recently that, you know, that, that, that reliance is not necessarily a good thing, what I have realized and what we have realized as a team is that they are a critical part of the team just as much as the surgeon, the nurse, the OR staff that's helping taking care of that patient. And so I wanted to call out a little bit of how they actually help. So from a surgical preparation, surgical support and post-surgical support perspective. So surgical preparation, they often help the surgeon uh, just review plans and verify the instruments and implants needed, right? So when I'm preparing for a case, I know the, the, the implant that I wanna use, I often verify with my, uh, my rep consultant to make sure that we have the appropriate instruments that are there to use and that I need. So they provide checks and balances for information flow. And as they gather more experience, their value um, and the reliance on them actually increases quite dramatically. They play a role in the OR staff, making sure that the, the sets are ready to go and making sure that they're uh, all complete when they're being open. And they help make sure that everything is ready down in the central processing uh, aspect. 
So during the actual surgery, they're often there as a direct line of support for the OR staff specifically um, to provide interoperative management of the materials and how they're used during the surgery for the person on the back table, for the scrub tech, for the circulator, understanding where and when they need to get stuff. And again, you can imagine the more experience that that person has, the more value that they provide to the care support team. And then lastly, as the post-surgical support, you know, once all this equipment is used, it needs to be able to be used again. It needs to be ready. So they have the ability of an infinite knowledge of the equipment that is used um, for their specific set to allow for that to be reprocessed and made available as quickly as needed for uh, another surgeon or another case to take care of their patient. So after all this, so what is the actual problem, right? Well, at the end of the day, we feel that the case management is just using these antiquated processes and not digitized. And that these antiquated manual processes, disconnected, disconnected communications, and the increasing complexity of instruments this leads to a whole slew of problems, inefficient operations, impeded teamwork, inconsistent delivery quality, and limited institutional learning. This has been brought out in the literature time and time again, and has been a huge focus on a lot of research recently from about 2015 on, even a little bit before that. And it continually makes the case for change. The transparency, the understanding of the lack of efficiencies and the amount of cost that this builds into the system that is unnecessary and how can we actually optimize this and create this and make a more efficient, proficient process to optimize the care of our patients. So with that, we set out with our mission at OR Intelligence to digitize and optimize the surgical process to drive teamwork efficiency and quality in the OR, as Glenn so nicely said at, at the introduction. And so our thought was with current technology, use of artificial intelligence, machine learning to digitize their process, to allow empowering of all surgical stakeholders, not just the surgeon, not just the circulator, not just the scrub tech, not just the sales consultant, not just CBD, but all of them to enhance teamwork to enhance the efficiency and ultimately improve the quality. And with the secondary aspect by doing so, most likely decreasing the cost. So what is it that we offer? Well, we deliver an AI enabled platform that digitizes and optimizes the operating room supply chain to drive teamwork, efficiency, and quality. We basically put all this together in one central platform. Our goal is to link the chain, as we say, and we provide benefits for both providers and for the industry. So let's go through these and see how each of them works. So Smart Card 2.0 is our scheduling case uh, booking feature. So it's an AI enabled planning tool based on surgeon preference and facilities. It's been built to be intuitive, just like a shopping cart, very similar to any Amazon or any virtual shopping cart that you might uh, go online on your phone or on, on the internet. And it creates this scorecard methodology that is backed by machine learning and provides real-time feedback to the surgeon and their staff of what equipment that's being used and asked for and when and how and where it will be available. It also creates the opportunity for real-time communication of all parties involved to facilitate case presentation. And there's literally no delay in that communication. As you can see at the, pull, the call out here, the red, yellow, and green dots is actually similar to the stoplight analogy, red, yellow, green light. And this has been proven in a couple of studies from a, from a cost containment strategy where that surgeons themselves actually don't necessarily know the cost of implants that they're using. But when they do, they will often pick the most cost efficient strategy to take care of their patient. So this calls that out and makes that very, very appropriate and kind of acknowledge right up front of what they're using and why they're using it. The cart manager aspect is when once this, the case is booked, the case needs to be prepared and how to optimize the inventory management. Again, this is down at the, the central processing level. It's full OR logistics visibility, know exactly where the case is, when the case is going and what information is needed uh, to make sure that case cart is ready and full and complete and that the, there's no missing instruments at the time of surgery. Again, real-time communication loops, 
uh, alert for missing items and substitute for recommendations and understanding exactly what's available, when it's available and why it needs to be available. Then the rep plus aspect of our platform is the virtual surgery assistant for real-time product support. Now this is our AI enabled interface with image recognition and natural language user face interface. So what this acts like is basically uh, an instrument identification location tool. These, the images that you see in your right is what is seen in the operating room with the ability for the sales consultant slash industry rep to control the screen, to identify the uh, implants and instruments that are needed for the case at the right time. It also has built in uh, machine learning algorithms that allow for real time problem solving as well as usage of instruction and can highlight the ability to track disposables as well as implants that are used in real time. And what we like to call at the point of consumption, which is probably the most optimal time to collect data of, of usage. So recent studies have shown that each aspect of this, of what we developed as a platform has significant benefits from a cost savings perspective. The ability just to better align physicians with implant prices has both a passive and an active aspect from savings. Just from an optimization of treatment choices, we look at three very, very common surgeries in orthopedics that are done throughout the country. A hip nail, meaning of taking care of a hip fracture, a total hip replacement, and a, a cervical spine uh, surgery. You know, just by savings, minimal amount, 10% on each, leads to significant savings over time. And this continues to drive that savings up the more that this is used and learns. It also allows for facilities to improve contract negotiations, which has been demonstrated time and time again to lower costs significantly. And if you look at that, just at one aspect of the process optimization perspective uh, with improved, improved case booking accuracy, if you, if you realize that most orthopedic procedures average about seven to 10 trays per case, if you can optimize that by 30% fewer or two trays, and it costs of roughly $100 to $110 to process and handle a tray at a facility that does 10,000 cases a year, that quickly goes to about just over a $2 million savings. Then, you know, we feel this is relatively conservative, but you can see how the savings here start to exponentially uh, increase over time uh, as the, the process becomes more efficient. There's also many other potential saving opportunities through just alignment of decision making, right sizing of resources, improving real time technical support, the real time data analysis, um, and you know how this this cost is being uh, borne out over per minute per OR per day. So that's great. So it saves costs, but what does it do for the personnel, which I think is really uh, one of the bigger things at the heart of the matter. What we understand is there's a lot of technology out there and oftentimes the technology uh, tends to fail to recognize the impact that it has on the people who are actually doing this job from a day to day perspective. And so what we sought out to do was to make it easier for healthcare professionals to focus on a patient while enabling everyone to drive efficiency, efficiency and quality. I liken this like to the professional basketball player when they're shooting their uh, free throw. You rarely see that basketball player take his eyes off the basket. At the same time in patient care and surgery, the focus should be on the patient, not all those ancillary things that are going on around. So we enable this, that the team is focused on what needs to be focused on to again, optimize that care. So it makes the process more predictable and increases efficiency for surgeons. It shortens the learning curve for technicians and it reduces excess equipment responsibilities for nurses. Again, it right sizes and minimizes waste and increases data capture. These are some, some quotes from, from uh, users of our platform, which I, I like this one, the second one, the best. This gives people with little experience the ability to confidently perform their job. It takes the stress out of it. It allows people to get where they need, when they need to be there as quickly as possible. Well, what about for industry, right? So there's two sides to every coin. So it gives the industry, the sales consultants and the, the industry experts, increased access to the OR and improved asset management while minimizing some of the need for in-person and reducing waste, which again, allows um, the, the people who are running around supporting this to be able to support more, more efficiently uh, and, and more often. Again, it enables multiple touch points it facilitates simultaneous support of multiple cases. Oftentimes the industry rep is responsible for a very large geographic area and it is virtually impossible for them to be at two places at once. Our platform actually allows people to be more than one place at once. It allows them to provide 
and the same care and provide the same service without sacrificing something to somebody else that might need them at the same time. Supplies, supply chain and logistics from digitizing the equipment, it allows it to be tracked and understand exactly where it is, is needed and it enables patient specific supply chain care. Um, and again, it tracks waste and identifies lost goods and allows that to minimize you know, some of the increased costs. One of my favorite quotes from this, again, from the usage is it makes the invention of laser pointer about as relevant as a square wheel. For those who have not been in the OR, oftentimes this, the industry rep is standing in a room with a laser pointer pointing at the equipment saying, this is what you need next to grab for the surgeon to do what they need to do. This basically eliminates the need to do that. So what have we, what have we learned? So um, as Glenn was alluding to earlier, we're an early company. Uh, we've been at this for three years building. We've been implemented for about a year. So far, we've done over 45 procedures and have 55 plus users. And some of our user feedback, which we understand from technology, is a big deal when it comes to adoption and adoptability of technology is that, you know, 100% of our users say that they would likely recommend OR intelligence to their colleagues or to be continue to be used. And our net promoter score at this current point in time is 100, uh, which when you look at it compared to some, some big giants out there, it's actually doing a little bit better. But again, we're early on, but we're pretty proud of that. So let's look at each of them, what, it's, what we're actually learning from it. So smart card is optimizing the surgical process, right? It, this AI enabled cards, it learns automatically from actual uses data. So right up from the very beginning, it is providing smart, accurate uh, suggestions based on real time data, which will improve accuracy, reduce time spent managing preference cards. Just as an aside, um, you know, my institution spends a lot of time managing preference cards. At one point, I personally had five different preference cards for the same procedure that was all trying to be managed uh, by a group of people. It optimizes equipment for utilization and it enables a surge in alignment with hospital pricing, which we talked about earlier, about how much that can save and uh, optimize cost uh, savings. What about the rep plus aspect? So, you know, we've realized over the last year that this is creating the environment to create high performing teams very quickly. We have this whole concept of the word teaming, uh, which happens every day in, in the OR. It allows for decreased OR traffic. Uh, de decreased OR traffic has always been a topic from an infection perspective, but in our new and current state with uh, transmission of uh, other diseases such as COVID-19, it really puts a lot of other people and specifically healthcare workers at risk. It enhances communication, improves accuracy. So again, this enhances that interaction. It decreases stress, it shortens the learning curve, and it fosters the environment of that same team aspect that the surgeon is looking for, just like his pit crew uh, every day that they walk into the operating room. This is a quote from one of our users and I just wanna, I just wanna highlight um, part of the quote because I think it's a really important thing that we're doing. It's not just the safety of our patients, it's also the safety that our, of our staff that's super important this day and age. And so direct out of this, this one of our users mouth, the operating room staff was able to practice in a safe and efficient manner. The COVID positive status was mitigated by a platform allowing excellence regardless of the implant. We are fortunate to have this resource. So again, the focus not only on the patient, but the staff that's providing care for that patient is an integral part of moving forward in today's uh, world. And the data insights, this is something we're still understanding the power of, but leveraging learnings in real time. The idea of this point of use consumption um, is probably as accurate as any data that we can gather uh, out there and currently is not being gathered. So the closer we get to that point of consumption data, the better and more accurate our ability to understand what is being used, when is being used, and how to, how to right size the environment to optimize equipment needs and reduce unnecessary waste. So our future direction, you know, we're working on a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we have a bunch of IP out there, patents pending, patents being granted, we're very excited about. We're really working on this image recognition aspect and voice user interface with machine learning. The idea of using optical image recognition for set management, um, which uh, is, is really uh, a the future of what we're doing as far as managing this. The advanced data capture and analytics that will provide real-time feedback and predictive analytics for what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis will really start to optimize uh, the entire process. 
this is our team. Obviously, I'm just one person, uh, part of a, of a big giant team that, um, you know, uh, they're all much smarter and brighter and, uh, and passionate about this than I am. And uh, it is truly that team uh, that makes this uh, a reality today. And so each one of these individuals are an integral part of what we're doing. And with that, I'd like to kind of leave us um, with a little, little one minute video of what we do. Greater operating room efficiency leads to better outcomes, lower costs, and an improved patient experience. Yet, we are still relying on antiquated manual processes. It's time to work smarter. OR Intelligence is an AI-enabled platform that digitizes and optimizes the operating room supply chain to drive teamwork, efficiency, and quality. It empowers surgical stakeholders with one central platform for scheduling, implant selection and logistics, virtual surgical support, and data analytics. OR Intelligence starts when the surgeon logs in to schedule their surgery. Using SmartCard 2.0, a planning tool backed by machine learning, surgeons are able to build their case to their preferences while keeping alignment with hospital contracts. This information is automatically communicated to the entire surgical team from the industry rep to the surgical technician. Simultaneously, the cart manager provides full OR visibility with alerts for missing items and substitution recommendations while maintaining real-time communication to all personnel. Finally, OR Intelligence Rep Plus provides real-time product support with web conferencing. OR Intelligence makes it easier for healthcare professionals to focus on patient care while enabling hospitals to drive efficiency and quality. OR Intelligence, empowering surgical care teams. Schedule a demo today. And that is all I have. So uh, thank you very much. And I will uh, stop. Oh, you, you took it from me. Perfect. And open up for discussion. Terrific. Thank, thank you, Derek. Great, great, great job on, on, on the presentation. Very, very fascinating. Uh, you know, as a, you, you don't, you don't often think of the OR as having stakeholders, right? I mean, uh, certainly from the patient side, you know, my, my experience is either being in there on the table or once when I was in public accounting, I remember when we had to do inventory, they told us the, the other 40 are in the OR, so you'll have to go in there and count them. Hmm. So my, my experience in, inside the room isn't, isn't quite as, uh, isn't quite as, sig as significant, but it, it fascinating. Look, I mean, when you when you apply uh, technology and, and business consulting types of arrangements, as well as inventory management to the whole process, it, it, it really it really brings it home, and it kind of emphasizes just how interconnected it really is. I mean, you, you had up on the screen that that hand card, uh, you know, and, and you're subject to, to people's handwriting. And I, I mean, I peaked in second grade when I got the handwriting award. After that, it was it, it was downhill. Mm -hmm. but, but just identifying all of those types of things, or, or what needs to get kind of involved uh, just to get ready from a from a case management standpoint. And some of the cost savings that you had up on the screen when you, when you actually apply that over the entire caseload or or the the calendar or the hospital. Um, it almost, you know, and you often, you often hear pe people talk about, oh, I had to wait for the surgery and stuff. To the extent that you guys use the technology and get smarter, it probably makes more OR time available for procedures, I would think. Absolutely. You know, I think one of the terms that we understand and one of our advisors uh, taught us early on is the idea of throughput efficiency, right? Um, you know, if we could, if you can increase throughput efficiency to allow a surgeon to do one more surgery that day, just one, um, that significantly increases uh, not only the reach that surgeon has, but, you know, revenue generation for the hospital as well. I mean, it's a win-win-win situation, right? You know, from a, when you think about from a technology standpoint, you think about uh, reimbursement strategies and tr traditionally how it's been more per diem or cost basis. How do you see this kind of uh, moving to a value, a value proposition from an outcome-based standpoint? I would think this would be right, right in the, right in the sweet spot for that. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a lot of opportunity here on multiple different fronts. I mean, obviously, the machine learning aspect and predictive analytics allows for more of a value-based conversation and decision-making uh, perspective. 
And we also, you know, understand that there's multiple parties. We talk about the stakeholders. Um, it, there's also the, the, the insurance companies, the CMS uh, aspect of it, um, who don't have a big view into the world of what we do right now. And, you know, if you start looking at some of the challenges we have from, you know, reimbursement rates and whatnot, a lot of it is because the, the knowledge, the data just isn't there, right? It's a lot of presumptions. I was just impressed. You said you were in surgery last night and here you are with us this morning. It's like, wow, this, this, this is, this is real life. This is real. This is real. <laughs> this is real. Doesn't it get much realer. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. You talked about the gaps, right? And, and certainly in the world of, of business consulting, you're, you're always doing, you know, kind of gap analysis, right? Where, where is, where, where is some of the, the shortcomings when you looked at the different types of gaps? And I think you had, I think you had four or five up Four. Any four, any any particular one more significant, or they or they all kind of kind of blend together. You know, I think they all blend together. I think the 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 access and uh, you know the mission critical information I think is a big one. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, when you talk about teams and teamwork, uh, you know, having you know this is like a classic business school thing, right? the shared vision. And it's all about that shared vision. And when we can't communicate what that shared vision is in an efficient way, that really uh, takes away from the ability to optimize uh, your, your team, right? So I think that's a big one. Uh, absolutely. And how, how did you have time to sneak in an MBA and, and on top of everything else that you've been doing? Well, I have a very uh, forgiving wife um, and uh, she gives me a lot of grace. So that is really the only way. That's terrific. Now you said you had you had a number of patents uh, that, that you've been working on. How 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 far along are those? Uh, they're coming along pretty pretty well. Um, we just got uh, word this week that uh, one of our patents were, was uh, um, fast tracked to be granted. So we're pretty happy about that. That's terrific. Now now the entity itself you you've had uh, you've been successful on a couple of fundraising uh, fronts. You want to maybe just tell tell the audience a little bit about that how that went how that process played out. Sure. You know, we started out like any uh, a good uh, startup does by uh, trying to bootstrap it and uh, do friends and families from a convertible debt perspective. And with that, we were able to build our proof of concept and get this to the point of a more serious, uh, engaged uh, Series A funding round, which we just uh, had uh, at the end of last year into the beginning of this year. Um, and we were very happy with it. We Close that just around a, a six million dollar funding round um, in a, a few very short weeks. Uh, so we are very pleased with that. Congratulations! Congratulations. Thank you. On the um, on the technology front, you, you mentioned uh, electronic health records and medical records. Kind of again moving away from that that image of the card. How how, how will OR intelligence kind of play into that? Complementary, uh, natural extension. What what do you think? Um, we like to think it's complementary. I mean, everybody asks, so what it does, it's, it does this, will this integrate into the EMR, right? That's the big question that we get. You know, currently we're not integrating, but that's the plan to integrate. But when you start thinking about integration, really, it's uh, some of the problems are the data that you pull from it. Really, the only data that we pull from it is some patient identifying data, and that will push a ton of data back. And so I think pushing that data back will complement it very nicely. And again, if we're starting to create kind of that, you know, one home, if you will, for, um, you know, a patient's data, we're going to put a lot back uh, compared to what we're taking out. Now you mentioned how significant the, uh, or again, part of the team, the industry, the industry representative is. How much, how much demoing of, of your product have you done to the industry reps? Uh, a fair amount. Um, you know, I think, you know, if, when you look at, about, at our business model, uh, it's kind of a two prong approach. It's both industry and it's both health. It's both industry, industry reps slash uh, medical device industry, as well as the healthcare centers. And so um, we interact with them almost daily. How about from an, from an education standpoint, trainings and things like that, how much time does it take to get, say, the, the OR stakeholders up, up, to, up to speed on the technology and using, using OR intelligence? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. And something to our surprise, um, you know, we have not done any formal training on our platform, and um, the people who use it pick it up naturally. And in fact, um, one of the quotes that I had in there was it allows people with uh, less experience to um, you know to feel comfortable in the OR. 
that actually came from somebody who had never been on the platform. They literally just saw it as that was, as we were wheeling it into the operating room. And um, we actually appreciated their feedback. They gave us feedback about the interface and that's it, you know, about the color and stuff like that. So we figured that was a good thing. <laughs> so it's really easy. It's honestly, we tried to make it like, you know, uh, you know, similar to the iPhone. It, it just makes sense. Oh, that's terrific because again you you certainly want uh, a hospital staff and then and, and the team to feel empowered right as they as they as they go through it you know you had a couple of the uh couple of the images and again being being on the patient side sometimes you take these things for granted but but as you said some of the, the sterilization the unnecessary opening of trays that means they're not available for somebody else down the line or you have to go through the whole process again uh from just a kind of an efficiency standpoint it's very very fascinating uh, and I would assume uh, it would also certainly add to productivity as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, it would increase productivity. The other thing, you know, that we don't touch on a lot, but there's obviously a huge aspect from a hospital side of things is risk mitigation as well. You know, I mean, when you know that everything's there that you need it and sterile, um, it just it mitigates a, a ton of risk as well. Well, you had that you had that one that one that one image where the the unsterilized person was uh, eerily eerily close. <laughs> To the, to the sterilized instruments, right? As the, Absolutely. As, as it went through. Well, listen, this this was really fascinating. I mean, congratulations on, on all your success. I mean, it is cutting edge. I mean, you look at you look at uh, you often talk about in, in healthcare the triple aim, right? Uh, of of you know cost reduction, patient satisfaction, population health uh, improvement, better outcomes, all of that. Certainly sounds like oh, our intelligence is, is is right in that sweet spot again for for, for those for the goals around triple aim. You know, I, th I think it is. And I think that's what we sought out to do from the very beginning. We wanted, we wanted to create a platform um, that was easily adoptable, that created a low friction uh, path um, to success and to coordinate basically the idea of what we want to do. We want to provide the best care that we possibly can at the lowest cost, right? And, and make sure we're efficient at doing it. Um, and that's what we sought out to do. We you know my uh, co-founder and I, uh, Tim Donnelly, he was a sales consultant for about a decade and he's one of my best friends from growing up. And so we talk all the time. We just had that natural connection. And, you know, what we'd often come back to is like, there has to be a better way. We have to be able to provide better care than what we're doing today. And that was really the impetus of where this came from. Well, that, that's always the spirit of an entrepreneur, right? That there's a problem and... and how do I, how do I go about fixing it? Right. And a lot of it sometimes comes from your own personal experiences, right? Why, why, why can't I have this? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting you say that. I think there's, there's, this is a very evolving field very quickly and there's lots of technology um, companies out there. And one of the things that we see is there's, it seems to be a lot of outsiders trying to come in. Right. And that doesn't often work. I mean, it does. It's just, it's a different take where, we feel like we're insiders coming out. Like we actually take our real life experiences that we live literally every day. Like, like I said, last night, and we take all those pain points and say, how can we make this better? The, um, you know, one of the, one of the things I had some personal experience with, 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 with the industry, with my parents and hospitalizations and the like, and a lot of the communications with, with the, uh, with the doctors and the surgeons was really uh, mobile text mm -hmm. messaging and things. From, from, from the OR intelligence standpoint, how, how, do you, how important uh, would a mobile application be? Is that something that's on the table? Maybe it is already. I'm not, I'm not sure. I just, just figured, given, given, given people running around with smartphones and everything now, and we do so much like that. Yeah, no, we, so the, in, the cool thing about our platform is that we're web-based, right? So it can um, uh, be uh, used on any device. And so, you know, do, for an example, our real-time communication, um, you know, platform uh, goes out by SMS. So as soon as the case is booked, the sales consultant, the, the scheduler, um, they, the, the CPD, they get alerts on their phone immediately. Um, and so that's, that's where that real-time communication aspect comes in. It's, it's, really, it's in an instant. It's pretty Im impressive, actually. Very, very, very impressive. Very impressive. Well, but listen, thank you, uh, Dr. Derek, for spending time with us today. Uh, fascinating presentation. Uh, from an entrepreneur standpoint, you and your partners are, are right there. Uh, one suggestion, I think you, you've got to probably update your, uh, you have your playoff beard 
in your, in your, <laughs> in your image. You probably, probably have to update, update the photo. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's uh, it, that's a yearly thing and that's a story for another time, but every, every November I grow a beard. So understandable, understandable, but listen, fascinating presentation. We wish you nothing but success. Uh, again, you're, you're, you're living the entrepreneurial kind of mission here. You're, you're, you're advancing uh, healthcare and technology in, in, out into the, uh, out into the marketplace uh, for the for the patient for the common good, you know, you're looking at cost savings and you're you're creating better outcomes, and you're and you're empowering the medical community, all stakeholders, and we congratulate you on on that aspect as well. Well, thank you very much, Glenn. Honestly, this has been a pleasure of mine, and uh, I really look forward to um, seeing more of what you guys are doing from bringing uh, ideas like this to the forefront and. Uh, Actually, you can't wait to see your, your live event coming up in, I think, the week of June 21st, right? That's right. That's right. We, we thank you. Thank you for that as well. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next time as well. Okay. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Thanks for everything. Continued success. Thank you, Glenn. Take care of yourself. See you All next right. time. All right. Bye-bye.